Hello everybody, Clips VH here as always, and we're back in E's Origin. We're playing as Toll. We laughed last off, we got through the second tier of the tower, and now we're in the third tier of the tower, the the hell fire stage. We're gonna kill these chickens. We're doing the same thing we're doing before, skipping all the samey bits, and I'm leaving all the important bits in, because most of the gameplay doesn't really change for the most part. It's mostly the same, but there are some things that are unique to Toll, and those are the things I want to show off. I'm also just mostly showing off his story more than anything else. Because I think his story is the best out of uh, all three. So there's nobody to save here or do anything with here. We just kill these monsters, and then when we kill them, we get the chest. And in that chest is the key we need to proceed. So, like before, we just put the Red Moon Crest into the altar, and it lowers this platform over here. So there isn't too much that's different, but there is one thing that's unique to Toll, is this. This wasn't here before. Now this is weird, we got these spikes and they hurt us and we can't get through. If only we had something with invincibility frames to get through. Oh yeah, that's right. So these monsters are here and we're gonna make quick work of them before uh, we try to open that chest. As Toll, this is actually the only way to get to this road of fruit. He, there is no button in this room when you play as Toll. So you have to use your wind skill to go through the spikes. You could walk through the spikes. It'll do damage to you, but you can walk through entirely. I don't know why you want to do that, though. Yeah, we're going to kill these chickens off and level up really quick. But I want to talk about the platforming and using the wind element, Toll's wind element for platforming. And, um, I don't like it as much as his fire element, and this is one of the reasons why. Here's the Mask of Eyes emblem, and we can't really get over there. But there is something over there. And this this chest is in the same spot. Anyway, since the only thing we have left to do is to fight the boss. Well, mid-boss. Let's fight the mid-boss.
And Zava's such a stereotype as far as villainous characters go. Okay, so we have to fight Shion now, and he's gonna shoot us with a lot of bullets. Now we have to take out his shield. Now we can't get too close to the shield because the shield will do damage to us, so the best thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use Thunder Element and just get him with Thunder Claw. So you gotta avoid his Toho and then get in close to him, get him with two shots with Thunder Claw, and that's about all you need to break his shield. A uh, charge shot will get rid of it a, lot, a little faster, but. Once the shield is down, you can wail on him, but make sure you avoid the Toho, or else you're gonna get all caught up in it. Then he'll call down these uh, little lightning strikes from the sky, and the idea is you want to count out how many times he does it. That's the easiest way you're going to do it, because then you just count him out, and then that, that's what I do anyway. And when he gets to the last one, you just rush for him. He'll also do a different kind of bullet barrage, where the bullets kind of home in on you, and that's a little annoying if you get caught. Because then Toll goes to his little, oh no, I'm hurt animation, and that kind of keeps him in one place for like a split second longer than you'd like to be. So if you don't manage to break his shield in time and start wailing on him, uh, he'll just move right on to his next attack. So you want to try and do it as fast as you can, but if you get carried away and you get a little greedy, he's going to get pissed off, he's going to activate his shield, and he's going to start shooting at you with uh, his magic. For the most part, his patterns kind of remain the same. So, you just gotta get used to him and then just hit him with the Thunderclaw when you get close to him. The Wind Skill would be good here because you got your invincibility frames. Except for certain parts where he throws bullets at you like this. You wanna just kinda keep calm and, and bob and weave and avoid the Toho. When he feels like he's had enough of you, he'll shoot you with lasers, but the lasers are pretty easy to read, so they're not really much of a problem. Only if you screw up like I just did a second ago are you going to actually get hit by it. And it's got a very distinct audio cue, so you'll know when he's about to shoot it. Anyway, this one is kind of close, but um, since he used one of his easier to dodge attacks, it's going to be uh, a little easy to take him out. Unless I screw up here. Oh no. The suspense. I've got so little health. I've only got eight health left. Will I make it? Yeah, I will.
Anyway, right back where we left off. And let's let's let's, let's go get the great sword. Now I want you to pay attention to this cutscene.
Okay, so let me show you why I prefer uh, Fire Element to for uh, platforming. Once we get our first Ruby, we can actually uh, use Fire Element a little better uh, because we can charge it. And over here is a chest, and that's got 2,000 SP if you need it. Moving on, we just have to light these torches like last time, and you'll raise these platforms. So let's talk about Saltova. He gives his he gives his uh, his comrade his sword because he knows he's got some kind of plan. He knows what's up, and also because Toll was like an honorable soldier. This chest is also in the same spot. Don't forget it. And this ruby is also in the same spot. And he likes Toll. He went out of his way to try and convince Hugo not to take his sword. But I'll say I'll I'll talk more about that after this cutscene, because this cutscene is actually really relevant to what I'm saying. Let's break this and we'll get a full boost fruit. Now, Toll even gives the sword to Unica because he knows it belongs to her. And also, Saltova is completely okay with anybody but Hugo having his sword. I just want to put that out there. Anyway, here's something I haven't shown off yet. I'm not really sure why I haven't shown it off. But when Toll goes into his demon form, he can actually talk to the Ruse. Like, he can actually understand what they say. Anyway, I'm going to show you what the other two say, just for, you know, the purposes of showing it off.
we're gonna get some health, and we're not gonna actually bother teleporting back to the statue because it's actually really easy to keep uh, from dying in the court in Devil's Corridor as Toll. If you run out of boost mode, then you can break one of these pots for full boost fruit if it has it in it. But even if it doesn't have the full boost fruit in it, you can still just beat the crap out of the enemies that are just kind of walking around because Toll regains his boost mode, his boost gauge, really quickly when he's uh, doing damage. But the best way really is just to break those pots if you really don't want to lose any health. It also help you take care of the big guys a little faster. Anyway, after that, the next chest is in the same spot. And that's got the Clarior. And as you remember, Toll can just use the Clarior on his own. He doesn't need to go find Rico. He might not even know Rico's here. This chest with the Spirit Cape is also in the same spot. And this chest with some leggings is also in the same spot. And this chest with the medallion is also in the same spot, and it has the same trap. So you know the drill. Light the torch, light the torch, light the torch, get this chest, put the cell set in Panakea, which is also in the same spot, and light the torch. And now we have the Construct Medallion. And now that we have the Medallion, right after is the boss room, so let's go fight the boss. So this boss is the same, you just gotta avoid his fist. Toll attacks a little faster than the other two characters, except maybe Hugo, because he can shoot his bullets really fast, but he attacks a little faster. So, taking uh, this big guy's fists off isn't too much of a challenge. However, it's a bit hard when he puts his fists in the lava like that, because Toll, again, doesn't have any range. So you gotta get, like, right on top of him. Godspeed skill is good for this because you could just do that. In case you think you're going to take any damage, you can use those invincibility frames. The game kind of expects you to do that in, in a lot of places, like that last place with the spikes. It's aware. You don't have to feel like you're cheating when you do it because that, that's kind of the whole purpose of the skill. So other than that, really, or most other bits. He punched me in the lava. Uh, this boss fight is pretty much the same. Now I'm just gonna make him feel bad by walking very slowly to avoid these these lasers. Just don't get killed by the kamikaze chicken and wait for his fist to come down. So we're about halfway through this, and he's gonna do his thing. His pattern isn't really any different from when we fought him as Hugo. Not in any meaningful way, anyway. Then again, the bosses aren't gonna change up very much unless he changed difficulties. 
on like easy and very easy they actually lose some of their moves and their moves actually become a little less complicated and on hard or nightmare uh, their attacks and such actually become more complicated and more full of things for you to dodge and be worried about So, you know, if you're going to play on those difficulties, you know, have fun. It's always good when he's got the lava and he doesn't put his fist over the lava, because you don't have to risk falling into the lava. Since we're in boost mode, that should be just about it. He's going to show off his long neck and sink into the lava. This cutscene's gonna play for the rest of the video, so I'm gonna leave y'all to it. I'll see you all next time.